Barbara Corcoran's 10 Best Pieces of Advice on How to Be Successful. People would have laughed at you if you had told them a decade ago that Barbara Corcoran shares her pieces of advice on how to be successful. The internet has made it easier than ever to learn just about anything you want. So with all this content and information available, how did you know which ones to learn from and which ones actually work? Luckily for you, Mana member, for today's video, we've produced a list of the 10 best pieces of advice on how to be successful according to Barbara Corcoran. Remember that while the first step is completing any of these amazing advice, the second and possibly more important step is taking action even if it's imperfect action. Let's discuss Barbara Corcoran, the Shark Tank star, and money with an incredibly likable rags to riches tale of how she went from a working class origins to a current net worth of $100 million. Barbara is a successful businesswoman, wife, and mother. She frequently relates how being called stupid as a child inspired her to succeed utilizing non-academic methods. She also candidly discusses her triumphs as well as her problems such as the embarrassment of being a late reader, confidence and advocacy, not luck, landed her the Shark Tank job. But Barbara hasn't become well-known for teaching people how to set up budgets or pay off debt. She occasionally responds to questions on money management in a canned manner that sounds more like it came from her publicist than from Corcoran School of Hard Knocks. The most important life lessons that you may apply to many aspects of your life including your own money, were those that we called from Barbara's experiences. We also discovered some Barbara Corcoran advice, but it's not always applicable. Number 1. Master Failing Well Jumping out of the window will either make you a hero or an ass. Barbara's mother advised her, Jumping is the only way to become the hero, but be ready to become the ass if that's what happens. Learning to succeed after failure may be the most important skill you can develop. Put your failure behind you. You won't ever innovate or learn from your mistakes if you don't. As you struggle, keep in mind that you are only human. Let those around you witness your failure. That permits people to experience failure as well. And without that freedom, they could be hesitant to explore novel approaches or concepts. Spend no time feeling sorry for yourself if you fail. Pass on, recover, then try the next thing. Do it with your finances. Launch a business. Start a new company. Invest in a cause you support with money you can afford to lose. Number 2. Recognize your strength. If you want to be a cheerleader, you must know the cheers, said Barbara's mother. Do you recognize the claps? If not, avoid attempting to be the motivator. Get the cheerleader a job. You must therefore be aware of your strength, concentrate on them, and delegate the rest. And those advantages? Be vocal about them. Opportunities rarely come to individuals on a silver platter. Promote your own interest and let others know what you're good at. Encourage them to shoot you. Don't let people telling you you're not ready discourage you along the way. And don't let labels define you or stop you from trying. Do it with your finances. Practice, practice, practice. Budgeting and investing aren't inborn traits of the human race. Ask your partner to take care of or split the bookkeeping duties. Enroll in a course or pursue a degree. Number 3. 
Number 3. Collaborate with the proper people. Ready to assign tasks? Select wisely. Be in a company of people who complement your personality and skill set. Do it with your finances. Engage a financial advisor and follow their advice. Find a mentor. Create a team. Choose a trustworthy supervisor or find a new one. Number 4. Try out various occupations. On the Ellen DeGeneres show, Barbara brought up the fact that no one enters a department shop knowing exactly what dress they want to buy. Before they find what they're looking for, they try on a ton of other things. Do it with your finances. Switch jobs. Alternate employers. Switch careers. Number five, invest crazy money. Crazy money, play money, she's not referring to your emergency savings, keep building that. Barbara is referring to your discretionary money, which you set aside only for leisure. No matter how much money you have available, set aside a chunk to use frequently on something that will make you feel wealthy, even if it just costs $20. Do it with your finances. Set aside 5% of your income for leisure. What Barbara miscalculates for real estate buying advice. You might have been interested in hearing Barbara's tips on how to make a more competitive offer if you were expecting to buy a house in the current seller's market. After all, purchasing and selling real estate is her area of expertise. Barbara advised doing two things while appearing as a guest on Good Morning America. Get rid of the home inspection condition. Based on your pre-approval for a mortgage, make an all-cash offer. She is undoubtedly thinking like a real estate expert, but you still need to know more. Removing the inspection backup plan. Today, many buyers examine many houses on Sunday, pick one to submit an offer on on Monday, and choose the highest bid by the end of the day. To avoid being stuck with a clunker, as Barbara suggested to GMA, it's not practical to employ your own contractor. The contractor would have to examine a number of residences over the weekend before delivering comprehensive reports to you on Monday a.m. You can end up with a house that needs repairs that you can't afford if you skip the home inspection. Alternately, do this. Make the seller-friendly inspection contingency stronger. Think about including a condition stating that you won't withdraw the offer until the inspector discovers problems that will cost more than $10,000 to resolve. You decide the amount in dollars. Making a cash-only offer when applying for a mortgage. Once your finance has been pre-approved, Barbara informed GMA you're free to make an all-cash offer. Technically, that is not accurate. Even when a buyer has been pre-approved for a mortgage, financing might still fall through for a variety of reasons. Sellers are aware of it. The appraisal is the main factor that can cause your loan to fall through if you've already received a fully underwritten pre-approval. As a borrower, you can only submit a cash offer if you have funds available without any stipulations. A house loan is still subject to the appraisal despite the term upfront underwriting, used by some lenders to describe their mortgage pre-approval. An all-cash buyer can speed up the transaction and avoid obstacles by foregoing the assessment. The appraisal is not weighed by any mortgage lenders. When it comes to being organized and adaptable, Barbara Corcoran is on the right track. 
However, she does not have to deal with the same financial constraints that most families do when it comes to home buying guidance. Warning, the highest cashback credit card we've discovered now offers a 0% initial APR through almost 2024. You might be losing a lot of money if you're using the wrong credit or debit card. This top selection, which our expert adores, has a 0% introductory APR until almost 2024, a crazy cashback rate of up to 5%. And all of that miraculously comes with no annual fee. When the coronavirus started wreaking havoc on businesses all around the United States in March, Barbara Corcoran began calling the executives of her 78 companies. Many of the Shark Tank investors' other companies were taking a wait-and-see attitude, while her best-performing companies were already frantically trying to adjust. The chats gave her entrepreneurs an early sense of who would be able to answer confidently and who wouldn't. According to Corcoran, it really divided the women from the girls and the men from the boys. I'm starting to think that half of everyone's success is just the capacity to turn on a dime and be absurdly optimistic. Corcoran has picked up a lot of knowledge over the last six months about what works and doesn't for businesses during a pandemic. Here are her suggestions for thriving in the COVID-19 era. Number 1. Discard the business strategy One of the first things Corcoran ordered her business owners to do in March was to produce a list of all their revenue sources, which they then promptly destroyed. Assume that nothing on that list will ever occur again, advises Corcoran. Where else could you be able to generate some business? Since getting new clients often cost four or five times as much as keeping an existing customer, her entrepreneurs frequently develop fresh direct-to-consumer prospects and strategies for connecting with them. 2. Speak with your landlord Since the start of the pandemic, many of Corcoran's business owners have had difficulty paying their rent, even those that haven't anticipated eventually running out of money for rent. According to Corcoran, the moment you suspect you could have difficulties paying your rent in the future, you should phone your landlord, explain as much as you can about your lost income, and politely request flexibility. You need to keep in mind that all landlords are currently terrified she continues. That provides your company a ton of leverage. Right now, nobody wants vacant space. Number 3. Get Camera Sales Training as in-person contact is increasingly being replaced by video conferencing, many entrepreneurs must learn how to properly present their product on camera. Kim Nelson, the owner of the online handmade cake business Daisy Cakes and a fellow Shark Tank participant, helped Corcoran's other entrepreneurs feel at ease making sales on camera, according to Corcoran. When it's difficult to do so in person, she was able to teach people how to present product and how to persuade people to see, feel, and taste it, according to Corcoran. 4. Create a best-case and worst-case scenario Corcoran has encouraged her business owners to create two strategies during the pandemic. One that anticipates the best-case scenario for the following six months and another that anticipates the worst-case scenario. This will prevent you from being totally unprepared for whatever happens to your company. Because nothing can be predicted, Corcoran advises planning for both. The coronavirus vaccine is the most important factor according to this. Number 5. Keep your business going While it's the responsibility of every business owner to position their company for long-term growth, Corcoran asserts that the best course of action during the pandemic is to focus on maintaining your company's viability in the short term. Simply put, there's too much uncertainty to be able to concentrate on long-term outcomes. You'll lose your mind attempting to control something you can't, according to Corcoran. She encourages individuals to concentrate on whatever will be helpful during the day or the coming week since she really believes that will make the biggest difference. One of our mentors teamed up with Barbara Corcoran to answer the top 10 burning business questions that her no-nonsense straightforward advice can help. Number 1. Do you have any advice for how to maintain motivation and focus while working a 9-to-5 job? Despite loving what I do and being a wife and mother of two, I had to take 9-to-5 job to help out at home. Entrepreneur and Shark Tank judge Barbara Corcoran responds, You have a ton of responsibilities. Being a working mother of two is difficult enough without having to deal with the enormous challenge of starting a business. If we are extremely careful about what we concentrate on, we all perform better with less time. Children are always prioritized with moms. To prioritize the many tasks I have to complete at work and at home, I use a rating system. I assign an A, B, or C grade to each of my tasks. A being the highest priority, and I make an effort to complete all A's and a few B's each day. 
I'm able to balance being a good mother and running my business thanks to organization and daily practice. Last but not least, consider partnering with another mom, ideally one with a different skill set, to help you grow your company. Without Esther, I would never have been able to have a family. Number two, how can I prevent my company from stagnating and stay one step ahead of the competition? Entrepreneur and Shark Tank judge Barbara Corcoran responds, Stagnation occurs when you work too hard. Perform too many of the same boring tasks at work. Deal with a difficult client or draining coworker, Or go too long without taking a vacation. It's impossible to advance your business when you're mentally stuck. So it's time to take a break, refocus, and get rid of the things you don't enjoy doing. Ask yourself, who do I know who could take over this task responsibility for me? Everyone is aware of their dislikes. There is always someone, but to see it and understand it all, you must take a step back. Number three, what are some low-cost strategies for promoting my company and increasing website traffic? I'm trying to expand my small jewelry internet business, but I need to find ways to advertise outside of my hometown where most of my customers come from. Entrepreneur and Shark Tank judge Barbara Corcoran responds, Reaching a niche audience is easy and free on platforms like Instagram and Pinterest. By using excellent photography, you can draw attention to your gorgeous products. Grace and Lace, one of my most lucrative Shark Tank businesses, sells sexy knitwear that young women adore, with the majority of their sales occurring online. Despite only being in business for three years, they will reach $10 million in sales this year. Examine their social media and try to imitate what they do. The designer Melissa is an expert in both fashion and sales. 4. What screening questions do you use to determine whether a candidate is trustworthy and a good hire? Entrepreneur and Shark Tank judge Barbara Corcoran responds, The best strategy aside from checking the references, which I constantly forget to do, is to ask the right questions during the interview. I enjoy inquiring about people's mothers, fathers, friends, interests, and other non-work-related topics. In contrast to the typical interview questions, which people can get pretty good at and use their responses to make a more favorable and untruthful impression of, these are things that applicants don't practice. In other words, people's guards are up when you talk about business, but when you talk about family, you usually get to see them as they really are. Number 5. Although we have the chance to relocate our restaurant to a better area with more tourists, shoppers, and businesses, we are hesitant to do so for fear of alienating our devoted clientele. What suggestions do you have for keeping our customers while we move locations? Entrepreneur and Shark Tank judge Barbara Corcoran responds, Moving your small restaurant to a better street with more tourists and shoppers is a wise move because you have no choice but to expand when your business is doing well. You shouldn't have any trouble keeping your devoted and content customers as long as you're still within a 20-minute drive of your previous location. All you have to do is make a long-ahead announcement like moving to an even happier home on January 1st, give a gift certificate for dinner for two at your new restaurant to each returning patron that will encourage them to return. Number 6. Does an MBA aid a business at any stage? Entrepreneur and Shark Tank judge Barbara Corcoran responds, MBA programs are time and money intensive. You gain a broad understanding of business from what you learn in business school, including what functions well and poorly. It will also get you a well-paying job working for someone else. But if you want to start your own business, hustle and street marts are much more important than an MBA. Number 7. What lead generation strategy worked best when you were a new real estate agent and how would you adapt it from the current market? Entrepreneur and Shark Tank judge Barbara Corcoran responds, The best leads are always generated by word-of-mouth recommendations because the customer is already favorable toward you and anticipates great outcomes because they were suggested by another happy customer. Consequently, asking your most recent client to recommend you is the most effective way to generate new leads. Number 8. During lean periods, how can a small business owner grow a seasonal business? Entrepreneur and Shark Tank judge Barbara Corcoran responds, It's difficult to respond to this question if you don't know what your company does. In order to build a business around one of their needs, I advise talking to your customers during the busy season and finding out how they spend their time, what they enjoy doing, and what services they have trouble finding off-season. Number 9. How can you grow your company without having a sizable cash flow? I think it's difficult for me to keep expanding my business. Entrepreneur and Shark Tank judge Barbara Corcoran responds, Every business experiences a cash flow problem, and it never really goes away. 
the bad news is that, the good news is that a tight budget forces you to make wise use of every dollar. And the best investments are those that directly increase sales. Anything else is a waste of money that has been worked for. Number 10. One of my friends owns her business and has been a general contractor for 15 years. She enjoys building, but real estate is her true love. She also has a license. She would adore your opinion on where she ought to direct my attention, on her area of passion or her construction company where she makes money. Entrepreneur and Shark Tank Judge Barbara Corcoran responds, You are always happy when you're living your passion. I believe you can continue running your construction company while also pursuing your passion. Real estate and construction go together like bread and butter. What if you were to sell real estate and when you came across a rundown house, purchase it for yourself? renovate it and then either sell it for a profit or rent it out to a tenant. General contracting contributed very little to the nation's wealth, which was primarily generated by real estate. That's it for this video, man a member. Remember to subscribe to our channel and if you feel like we've delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person as a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates and helps you on your mission of building your own fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video but it isn't until you actually take action that you'll start to see results. See you soon!